and we're back with another episode of World One One Podcast. Before we dig in, a couple of pieces, quick tease for the third half of the show. Kathy and I are talking about Zelda likes, and you should stick around for that because it's awesome. Also, you can and should subscribe and share to the show if you haven't already. Uh, make sure you share it with your friends so that they can be miserable right along with you. Uh, that said, also check the show notes. Come join and jump into our Discord and come chat with us. It's nice to talk to the the three people that listen to this on a semi-regular basis. Shout out to our awesome sponsor, though, Imaginary Authors, helping you up your scent game. More about them just before the break. All that out of the way. I am, as always, your host, Roll to the Wall. Joining me this week are my good friends and borderline family. One of them is. Uh, let's start with... Michael, because I haven't seen your face in for fucking ever, and I still can't see your face, but we're not nitpicking about that. I'm just making a joke about it at this point. So That's good. I didn't want to have to stab you. That's not true. You want to stab everyone. Michael, you're not a Pokemon. You don't get stat attribute bonus. You are a liar, and I don't appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, also with me this week is my wonderful wife, Zoe. Sup, y'all. Oh, uh, and becoming the ever faithful Wes Evans. Becoming? Uh-huh. Oh, well, you know what? I'll take that as a compliment. It is. So, all right. Let's, let's dive in, boys and girls and uh, non-binary pals. So, let's get to, oh my God, video games. And because I haven't heard from you in the longest, Michael, you're up. I've been, playing, been, the playing? I've been playing the new Tekken. Yeah, um, how do we feel about the new Tekken now that you've spent more time with it? I actually have grown to really like it. I was very weirded out by a lot of the changes at first, um, but I realize it's made it much more accessible to both newcomers and people that have been playing for you know years and years and years. Um, the story mode was fantastic, and, like, like it, it did this thing where, uh, if you're not familiar with it, like, after the fourth game, one of the main characters, Jin Kazama, changed his fighting style completely to basically say fuck you to his family. Um, and, uh, at the end, like... He ends up going through the entire roster of all the different fighting styles he's used or is somehow attached to, like, while trying to beat his dad, Kazuya. Um, it's, it was... What? Can we just acknowledge that no genre has more batshit insane storylines and canons than fighting games? Acceptable. I'm totally <laughs> okay with it. Like I, I've as I said, that's the entire reason I actually fell in love with the Tekken series is because the main character in the first game is not a good guy. Mm -hmm. Like he literally, his ending was he threw his dad off the same cliff that his dad threw him off. <laughs> so, God, we're fair, not even going for metaphorical a... generational trauma. <laughs> that's like, to be fair, does that make you a bad guy if you do that? I mean... Oh, he's a piece of shit. Like, Kazuya has always been a piece of shit. And, like... Like, like Rawl said, it's it's been just... Batshit crazy after batshit crazy. It's, like, at one point, the good guy of the series decides, I'm gonna start World War Three to try to draw out the evil entity that's been causing me to be a bad guy. And it didn't work. Like, it's, it's fucked up. It didn't work as in it didn't start World War Three, or it oh, didn't work oh, as he's, in... Oh, he started, he started World War Three, beat the entity, it didn't fix the situation, so now he's just the guy who started World War Three. <laughs> um, and then at the end of that, his dad basically stood up and goes, uh, I'm declaring martial law on the entire planet. You, the only way you can, you know, survive is to fight your way out. Like, as I said, it's, the entire story is nuts, but I kind of love it. <laughs> Look, you can either write something really well or write something completely insane. Oh, it was done really well, though. Like, I was, mm -hmm. as I said, I was impressed. The way they did, 
like the transition between characters, they actually kind of in, implemented a little bit of every character into the main story. Like, because this takes place directly after Tekken 7, which had Akuma from Street Fighter as part of the story. Okay. Um, I was kind of disappointed they didn't touch on that at all, Like, uh, but for licensing reasons, I assumed it wouldn't. Mm-hmm. But, Ugh. yeah, as I said, it was, it's well done. Um, the The game is much more flashy and much more, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you know, just, it's just bigger now. It's more spectacle. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, but it's, it's, as I said, I'm, I'm still enjoying it. Uh, it's still it's still one of those situations where like I'm really good at the game until I go online, and then mm-hmm. I'm quickly humbled. <laughs> <laughs> but got to get a slice of that pie. Yeah. Fuck all uh, that. What else have you been playing? Anything else? No, that's about it. Like my sister for my upcoming birthday just bought me the deluxe version of the new uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which Ooh. I haven't actually got that yet, but. I'm actually really looking forward to it because the the remake was a lot better than I was expecting it to be. Yeah. But okay. that's really about it at this point. All right. Uh, to to keep Michael happy here, I'm actually going to toss it to Zoe next. Uh, so as you guys know and have heard, I've been playing through Dark Siders. I finished the first one. I think sometime last week and then I was very excited to start the second one I was a little confused at first because I didn't realize like initially that they were like parallel stories so I remember last time I was talking about how's that gonna work where you're just playing one of the horsemen because at the end of the uh first one you see all the like other horsemen show up And so this explains why you're only playing as one of the horsemen, because, you know, at this time you have that has not happened yet. Um, The game mechanics are very different like this. Not even just the character itself, but like the game as a whole, Um, there are some things that I like better. Um, like the fact that enemies now have like a health bar. I always like knowing just where I am in the goddamn battle, especially at like at least if there is no physical kind of indication of where the enemy is. Um and uh but it definitely added in some like Diablo esque things like now I'm picking up pieces of armor that I get to use at different levels instead of just you know gathering skills on top of skills on top of skills where like there's really no leveling I mean there is a leveling system in the first Diablo but like for weapons not necessarily or not the first Diablo but the first Darksiders um, but more like leveling weapons rather than the character themselves and uh So that's interesting. His movements are completely different. I'm finding that, you know, I'm really having to shift what I think the character is supposed to do. Um, Because where, like, War is kind of like this big, like, stalking character and does different things, Death is, you know, way more agile. He can, like, wall run and shit like that, and War couldn't do anything like that. He was much more, like, forceful. And so, um, like, even in the game, at least where I'm at right now, there's not even, like, a parrying move that, like, War had. And it might be something that shows up later, I don't know, but, like, it's more like a dodge thing and so um i'm liking the story so far i do like that there is kind of more of an rpg element by you being able to decide what the hell you're saying to people and what you want to talk about um so i do like that it is it is a big shift but i'm not mad at it it's just taking some adjustment considering i picked this one up so close to playing the first one that like i said the mechanics are so different Um, so other than that and having to, like, try and shift my thinking on how the character is supposed to work, uh, I'm enjoying myself so far. 
Good. That that ending of the first game actually gave me chills the first time I saw it. Oh, it's fucking awesome. Like, yeah, it was so melodramatic. I absolutely adored it. Um, the uh, the second game, I kind of disliked the loot mechanic. The like, I I, I preferred the first one, which was kind of a cross between God of War and The Legend of Zelda. The Darksiders 2 kind of had more of an MMO feel um, a little bit, whereas then the third one is supposed to be like a uh, like a Souls-like, and then the fourth one is a straight-up Diablo. Why couldn't they just, like, stick with one thing? They just wanted each one to feel differently. They, they okay. Wanted to, they wanted to give each its own identity. Um. That's interesting. The, yeah, the third one, like, because the third one takes place just before the first one. Um, so you you go to a, still a post-apocalyptic Earth, but it's still everything is kind of lush and overgrown and things like that. Um, Fury's story, actually, I think is honestly one of my favorites. Like, the first one is still hands down my favorite, just because it set the tone and things like that. And then the the fourth one is actually a prequel to all of it. Like it takes place right after the fall of man. Hmm. Okay. So do you get to play as all four horsemen? Yes. The the okay. fourth one you play as you you actually since as I said it's an overhead isometric Diablo style game, you play as both strife and war, and you could switch between the two. I'm kind of upset that the fourth horseman is strife. <sighs> like, I, because I went and looked it up, like what the four horsemen was, and like really depending on what fucking mythology you're mm. following, they're different. And I get that, but like, I really liked like pestilence. And I was like, that would have been an interesting like thing to see as a horseman. I'm um, just like, how do you put that into a game? Which is why I'm guessing they didn't go that route. And I, mm. I totally get it. But, yeah. like, I just thought it would be cool, you know, to have an ability that just, like, you know, because right now with death, like, one of the abilities I have, which is also interesting because it's a skill tree now, and so I'm just like, mm. um, But, you know, one of his abilities is to, like, raise ghouls that fight with you. And I was like, okay, that, you know, is very much fitting of death. And so everything in my head was like, oh, man, I hope it's pestilence. And he has, like, this thing that just, like, goes out and fucks with people, you know, just, like, makes them sick or something. Like, it would have been really cool to see some abilities like that. So I was a little disappointed when I looked it up and found that the other one is Strife. Yeah, like, I understand why they changed it, because that would be kind of difficult to do across the board. Like, Strife uses guns. He uses uh, dual pistols, so which is why they kind of went the Diablo route with it. So you, it's literally a, uh, a twin-stick shooter with him. Whereas War in that game plays exactly the same as he plays in the first game. It's just from a farther distance. Okay. Oh. Zoe, have you been picking at anything else this week? Or was it just uh, uh, Darksiders? I meant I wanted to start Power World, but I only That's didn't right. because uh, I started playing Diablo 2 while that was downloading and then forgot to go back and actually start the other one because I've been. Uh, because I've been playing Darksiders. But Power World is on my list. Um Honestly, it came into my view, one, um, because one of uh, my kids I was talking to, I was talking about it, and I didn't even know, well, I did know it had existed, but, like, that's because I saw it in, I don't know, one of the random fucking video things we saw where they, like, tease new games and shit, so I don't know which one it was, but it was one of those, and, but I forgot about it, and then right after... Uh, my kid told me about it. Um, my brother made a TikTok about it. And I'm like, fuck, I really got to play this game. And because, uh, you know, when you hear a game called Pokemon with guns, it's kind of hard not to, like, want to play something like that. And uh, also, I'm not going to lie, the whole controversy with it being Pokemon, but not Pokemon is kind of 
uh, entertaining to me. Um, because I'm not going to lie, I've played some of the other Pokemon games and they're just not really my thing. But so far, everything I've seen of Power World looks pretty awesome. So I'm excited. But have I actually played anything else? No. <laughs> just remember, it's always morally okay to pirate Nintendo games. And that it's also morally okay to violate their IPs in other ways as well. Uh, there, there's a contentious topic and we've gotten into that over the years here, but, um, that said, Wes, are you back on your Yakuza bullshit? Uh, I have <laughs> not lately had much sit down time to do it. So a lot of the oh, bro, time that I'm that. actually playing games, it's something that I can do like one session for 30, 45 minutes at a time. So uh that's been a lot of hades lately and i've almost i'm this close to having all the steam achievements finally i keep Ooh. saying that the one thing i don't like about that game is oh, hello talking about games talking about games <laughs> sorry about that oh you that's got, so going at the beginning of the show now yeah, oh yeah <laughs> anyway but like there's that game has a great story with terrible pacing so like the last thing i'm needing is to unlock all the companions or not the companions uh actually yeah your chthonic companions which you can only get the last one that i have antos when you finally get achilles and patroclus back together so that those roommates can finally start rooming together again but uh and so basically you have to find Patroclus enough times, listen to him say, I don't get to be with Achilles anymore. And that makes me sad. Go back to Achilles and hear him say, I don't get to be with Patroclus anymore, lad. And that makes me sad. Do that about 10 times. And finally, Patroclus is like, I know I've known this whole time you've had the ability to reunite us. So can you please do that for me? <laughs> and so, yeah. I just have to find them one more time, Achilles and Patroclus together, give Achilles his ambrosia, and then we'll finally get that last Steam achievement for the game. Okay. Anything else on the hit list this week? Uh, I'll cheat again a little bit and say I've still been working on some game dev stuff in Godot. Not really properly playing a game, unless you count the ones that I'm making. <laughs> That's valid. Still so. no, uh, I'll be completely honest and say I'm still doing like guided practices at this point because I'm still trying to get familiar with it. And this is the first time I've ever outside of school done a coding project seriously. So some work okay. to get done there. Okay, let's see here. Well, in that case, um, I rolled credits on Old School Musical, and it was absolutely delightful. And I'm kicking myself even harder knowing that I, I sold preemptively my physical copy of that to LaGrew, but we already talked about that. But just rolling credits on it just doubles down that fucking feeling. Um, but it was a lot of fucking fun. Uh, Michael, if you haven't played it, you'll probably get a chuckle out of this. Pretty much all the stages or like stage names or world names are spoofs and parody because that that's essentially what it is. It's a lot of like spoof and parody of other video games. And so you'll, you'll go through like individual worlds that have usually like three songs a piece to them, um, moving you through the story. But there were ones like, uh, oh, what was it? Wind of the Savage instead of Breath of the Wild. There was Iron Snail instead of Metal Slug. <laughs> Shit like that. It's it's so fucking cheeky and cheesy. It's just perfect. What's um, this game called? Old School Musical. Hmm. Never heard of it. Uh, um, yeah, no, it's it's been around for a few years, but it you watch for it on sale on the eShop. If you can find it at a good price, you'll have a really good time. All right. And it's not super long. You you could probably plow it in a weekend. Okay. So, but the story was super cute. 
there, there's even extra funny shit after the credits that I won't spoil. Just know that it's there and there's something fun to look forward to. Um, that That's probably been... Oh, that and I finally fucking cracked through the intro of Control and I'm getting into some of the meat of it. And that that might be my next big fixation game that I actually start hammering on. Um, I'm coming to terms with the fact that I'm not good at it, but I'm enjoying it anyways. Um, shooters are not my jam, especially third-person shooters for some reason. I do extra crappily with. Um, as Zoe saw when we were attempting some Gears of War co-op, and then my my kid pointed out quite you know in in the way that only a, a seven almost eight year old child can. Daddy, you're not good at this game. No, honey, I'm not. <laughs> but that said, it's story wise, it's got like just the right mix of elements. It it's got that that sci fi piece to it. It's got um, almost a touch of Silent Hill 2's ambiance with like the menacing fog kind of thing. They call it the hiss. Um, so it's it's got some of that horror uh, to it, but it, like just the right level, uh, ju- just the right balance of. Um, and the the story is the the bits that I've gotten so far are legitimately interesting. The, this whole concept that the that the building essentially hides itself and you can only find the door to it if if you're looking for it and the building likes it that way so like the the whole control office is its own sort of sentient entity I'm like ooh this is neat I like this that and it does the whole you know commertage thing where it connects to a bunch of different places all over so you you could go in one door in new york and you know come out and i don't know bangkok in another door so the the visual vibe gives strong hints of uh super hot Lots of red and white overtones. Not so much the... No, actually, no. It actually does even kind of push the the, the low-poly geometric shape thing with uh, some of the brutalist architecture stuff that it's got going on. Um, but it's cool. I dig it. Um, I'm probably going to sink more into it. And then I'll end up gushing with LeGrew about it because, you know, uh, that's that's his jam. The, the yeah. whole Remedy verse. You're so, saying red and white. It, it, my, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, you're good. I was just going to say it, it, this may end up finally leading me into the Alan Wake games. Yeah. But you saying red and white reminded me, just in case anyone with any sort of faux sensitivity might be listening to this, do not play if you have any kind. If you have epilepsy, if you get migraines with it, like there are flashing lights everywhere in that game. I've checked. There is no way to turn them off. Yeah, that's that's a complicated one, uh, and there there's an old episode with uh, Eddie and I, you know, kind of talking about where the line is in compromising your artistic vision for accessibility. Right, but you know I that? I'm fortunate not to have epilepsy, but I can get really really bad headaches when I see flashing lights, oh, and yeah. so. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating when I say there are parts of that game that have caused me physical pain. So, you got to be careful when dealing with that. Right. Well, that that's almost an assumption with any game these days is just assume there's flashing lights somewhere. So, right. a lot of them though. I mean, at least for we'll years now, some... I would say for years now Nintendo's put the epilepsy warning in front of every game they make whether or not it's actually got anything in it that would trip it. Right. Right. So, so, but at this point, I'm pretty sure we all know that story anyways. I wonder, but it kind of makes me feel like, though, like, just because everyone's doing it, and I'm not saying this automatically makes an excuse, but, like, 
when everyone does it, it really cheapens what the warning is, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, like, here's one where it actually can be a problem and you can't turn it off compared to the one where it's like, oh, you flash red just a little bit and at a slow rate when you take damage. Not even close to the same thing, you know? Yeah. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. Just observing. Yeah. That's kind of my stance on, well, not really a stance, just more so an observation on the game that it is, it's not very accessible for people with photosensitivity issues. Yeah. But yeah, that's, it's, it's good though. I like it. I really like the fucking gun. It's cool as shit watching that thing reload from an empty clip. So it, it vaguely reminds me of the, uh, uh, the, it was either the precursors of the Forerunner uh, that was in Halo 4. Um, but their their weapons had, like, the floaty bits and shit that I thought was really goddamn cool. So, but that's, that's about all I've been playing, honestly. It's been a real fucking busy week. Just lots to do. That and I've, I've spent some time... Uh, I, I've been shifting my time a little bit uh, from game time to sitting and actually reading some comics and I'm, I'm going to deviate and gush for a minute because it's on my brain and it made me really happy. So just, you know, happy story. Uh, I got my, uh, my belated Valentine's day present this past week and it was a copy of captain America truth, which has been out of print for a while. And apparently they just, uh, did a, a fresh run of them. And so the local comic shop ordered me a copy uh, at my request because they knew that I'd been wanting to read it. We'd talked about it a few months ago and uh, I'd seen something that made me think there might be. And so they looked and went, holy shit, there is. Let's let's get you one. And so we went in for uh, comics on Thursday, Thursday. Had to think about that for a second. And uh, so that came home with me. And later that night, actually, uh, we were going to bed, and I wasn't quite ready to conk out yet, but Zoe was, so, you know, turned off the bedroom light, and Zoe's laying there, passed out next to me. There I sit, because I'm like, I'll I'll just read, like, you know, the, the first chapter issue, because it's a six-issue trade back. And um, so I'm, I'm sitting there reading, hunched over with uh, a flashlight in my hand so that, you know, Zoe can sleep, because light's off. Got through that first issue and then just kept, did not stop until I had read it front to back in about two hours. Just so good. Um, but if if you can get your hands on it, do. It's, it's very good. Um, it's the story of Isaiah Bradley, which if you've watched uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you, you've, you've seen Isaiah in that and this is his story. Um, I, I won't spoil more than that, but just, whew, very, very good. Strong recommendation. So, other than that, like I said, you know, just, I haven't played as much. I've been reading a little more lately uh, in in the comics. So, but that's, uh, that, that's a good place to wrap this part up. Uh, Let's let's take a moment and shout out our awesome sponsor, Imaginary Authors, helping you up your scent game with fragrances for guys, gals, and non non-binary pals. Also now offering awesome candles and bar soaps. Um, highly recommend you check out a, a growing favorite of mine, Memoirs of a Trespasser, uh, Notes of Vanilla, and Oak Barrels, and a couple of just ooh. Like, don't don't get me wrong, City on Fire is is my go-to, but man, Memoirs of a Trespasser is creeped right up there. It's it's kind of like a slightly more mellowed out City on Fire. So if you've tried that one already, you like that, you'll probably dig this one. So go check them out. They've got sample bottles for a, a couple of bucks a piece, so you can go put together your own, like build your own sample set, even try a bunch, see what you like, without you know dropping. 50 60 70 bucks on on a bottle of something and getting something that you don't like so it's a really good way to do it especially for moving something like buying fragrances to an online shop i've been very happy with them and i got good money it says you will too so go check them out 
link in the show notes. Use that link. It helps us. It helps them. And it helps you. So all that said, we'll be, uh, we'll be right back after the break. And we're back with the third half of the show. This week, we are diving down the warp pipe. And we're going to be looking at whether or not Zelda and Zelda-style games should finally just be broken off into their own genre, subgenre. So, let's dig in, because I got Kathy and LeGrew here with me for this one. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a wild shot in the dark and say, arguments for Kathy. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, am I right? All, well, am I? Are we not already? I mean, aren't Zelda games already their own <clears throat> genre? I mean, well, what, nobody yeah. looks at Okami or Dark Side and says Zelda like though. Well, because I think Zelda is such a <sighs> Zelda has influenced so many games. It's like Zelda it's, is its, its own. It's Zelda is its own entity i don't even think we can really i think zelda you see the influence of zelda in almost every single game since especially a lot of these open world exploratory games i mean i would even go as far to say like even games like skyrim you know the elder scrolls games the role-playing games have some zelda-esque stuff in there Maybe the conversation is is zelda the first open world game (laughs) I mean, because Zelda has a formula, though, and games like Skyrim and the like don't follow that. They formula. don't follow. Right. They don't. But they. And have, that's what I'm talking about. OK, so you've got okay. the ones that do follow that formula, but they're their own series, franchise, right. IP, well, whatever. And maybe, well, and that's maybe the reason why there really isn't ever that comparison, because. <sighs> people for, don't think about it that way because they look at if you say zelda you're immediately not thinking of a game style you're thinking of the games themselves when i when somebody right. says zelda to me i'm thinking specifically those type of games i i see hints of zelda but i don't think of like akami or um what was another game i played that reminded me a zelda like one um oh dark siders was there Darksiders was there. No, there was a different one that I played, and I was thinking oh, this is there very was Blossom King. No, oh, I can't think of it. But anyhow, there are games where I'm like, I see the hints of Zelda, but it's it's not. Zelda. But I wouldn't. It's not Zelda. Zelda is it's like its own. Just it's it's its and own. That's why world. I think that's why Raul's talking about this. Like, yeah, is it time we say that Zelda is its own thing. I think Zelda is its own thing, and I think that's how most people see it. I, there is always going to be that influence because of how good the games are. And I think Zelda also, the other thing about Zelda is that it's evolved. It's not one type right. of game. And I think that's where the problem lies. Cause yeah, because it's how... It's almost like well, you do up 2D until, Zelda from 3D Zelda to Breath of the Wild eat, Zelda to... Eat, I, up until Breath of the Wild, so everything preceding it Zelda-wise... Mm-hmm functionally followed the same formula whether it's 2d or 3d and so you've got other games that have aped that formula that design whether 2d or 3d and i'm going to lean on these heavily just as point comparisons not that they're the only ones but easy reference 2d uh what is it blossom king okay and 3d okami okay because we, we can look at the and go, this this is the translation of that formula in 2D or 3D. But that formula, the underlying formula, is still functionally the same no matter which way it's presented. It's okay. big world with, you know, half a dozen to a dozen dungeons. Okay. Find the, find the dungeons in the right order. Get into the dungeon. See things you can't. Uh-oh. I know. <laughs> oh no. Screenshot this. <laughs> Do ya. <laughs> oh, oh. Sorry, Larry. You froze out. Raul, you froze out. Yeah, Raul. Oh, did you I? were frozen. Yeah, we you were. You were the one like... that froze, and in general, we both froze. <laughs> <laughs> I said we gotta screenshot this because your screenshot was epic. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Now, I'm going to be curious how this actually came out in the recording itself, because the recording that it spits out is a little bit different when right. there, there's various freezes. It's a weird thing, but compliments to Skype, they figure it out pretty decently. They got an AI but, overlay that figures it out pretty good. That's good. Yeah, no, respect. So, 
Shout out to Skype that, you know, everybody else fucking forgot about. We're still here. Anyway. <laughs> <coughs> Dinosaurs in the Zoom age. But anyways. You know how it feels, um, you know how it feels Larry. Or Rob. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, well, you you're got, fine. You got to change I know. your name. I know, but it's hooked to the fucking profile address, and there's not anything I can do about it, yeah. I think. I don't know. But anyways, so you, you've got this functional formula that translates into, you know, whatever presentation you want to go with here. Hell, you could probably pump that into first person just fine, too. I mean, if Skyrim actually laid out their game formula the same way, you could put that in first person. Right. It doesn't matter. It's the It's the design philosophy of how the whole game orchestrates and strings together. And so, you know, I, I look at Okami and I go, that's a fucking Zelda like, you know, you look at Zelda and you go, that's a Zelda like too, because it's generally just lumped into this is the RPG category. And to me, that always seemed weird with the exception of Zelda two, because there's so little like, rpg element to it there there's not really the the stats and the number crunching happening it, it's it's weird to me that that's I, where that landed yeah i don't understand why zelda landed in rpg at all mm -hmm. um honestly i think it's like like kathy says i really feel it's its own thing i don't yeah. i feel like if you said zelda is its own thing i'd be like yeah we already know that like <laughs> tell right. me something like, i don't know but, I but do the problem understand. is it's not alone in that category now either. Right, I do get that. And um, it's almost like the term Metroidvania, right? Like we use that's that. The, yeah. We use a that. new Metroid comes out and you go, that's a Metroidvania. A new Castlevania comes out and you go, that's a Metroidvania. Right, right. And everyone understands what you're talking about when you say that. So mm -hmm. when you, if you say like, for example, like a game like Tunic, I did hear it described. Oh, it's Zelda, like Dark Souls mm -hmm. meets Zelda right yeah that kind of like game like that so i think when you really boil down to it it's just a, obviously it's a language issue it's is is this worth i think the question would be is it worth giving its own uh, category and i think it absolutely is but would we just be even gatekeeping even more now because we already have problems with the term metroidvania uh we've had episodes where we talk about that like is mm -hmm. that gatekeeping to people uh, yeah. You know, is that like not inclusive to other people? I don't know what we're talking about. If we mm -hmm. said, well, like Zelda, like if you've never played a Zelda game, I mean, first of all, if you're a gamer, never played a Zelda game, what the hell is wrong with you? Sit down. There's something there for you mm -hmm. uh, right. at, at any level. I mean, you can be a, a ch I mean, I was nine when I played Zelda because that's when it first came out. So I remember buying it and uh, playing it and I was just like loving it. Right. And then every game that came after that, like Zelda 2, I skipped at the time because I was just too young to really appreciate it. And, you know, Link to the Past, like that was a game that was mind-bendingly different than Zelda 1, but yet the same. And so, like, is it fair to, like, say, like, oh, that's a Zelda-like game? And I think it's fair to say that, but is it a good descriptor for everyone else? And I just don't know. And I think that's the issue that I have is because, like I said, when somebody says Zelda, like, I have a hard time picturing what that would be referencing a different game. Because um, for me, Zelda is so just synonymous with Link, the princess, and Ganon, even though Ganon isn't in everything. Mm -hmm. So it's very, for me, it's very specific. But, yeah. um, and but like when we talk about Metroidvania, I'm a little, I'm able to combine those two games, and I can, I see that as more, um, you know more, what I think it is. I think having the Venn diagram is what does it. And I've, okay, it, mm -hmm. uh, we, there, there was a conversation about it. I want to say, oh God, no, this has been a couple of years now. Um, but the, narrowing down what defines a metroidvania is you take the the venn diagram of metroid and castlevania and all the stuff that's in the middle that's your definition of metroidvania where where that overlap is but it wouldn't be the first time that a single game has spurred its own 
genre. We've got rogues. Mm -hmm. That's where it came from. You know, at one point we had the, the doom clone, which just, you know, eventually evolved into boomer shooter. Right. Is a, is a bigger (laughs) hole. Uh, Love how the group pops right back up. as we shot (laughs) boomer shooter. Hey, doom is one of my favorite games of all time. So, Uh uh-huh. Uh, why why do you think I mentioned one. it? It was so that know. you know you'd fix your connection. <laughs> yeah, no, it was fixed. I had a, a good friend call. I had to take that call. So. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah. like I said, I, I think I think the only thing lacking here is the other game, the the other established game to overlap it with to create that Venn diagram. But I, I still think though that that and at I mean, this do you point, ha- do you actually have to? Because you can say yeah. Zelda, and Zelda has so many different types of games. Mm-hmm. It could be Zelda Breath of the Wild, Zelda, you know, Link to the Past, Zelda, you know, it Wind could Waker. all be one. I mean, yeah. Wind Waker. I mean, like, look at, like, Wind Waker. So that's But aside great... from, like, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, though, they all follow that same formula. Not, I know, but. Not the... Zelda 2. No, even Zelda 2 did. Yeah, it did. Well, okay, I see what you mean, like, with the collecting the item. Uh-huh, find the dungeons in the right order, push okay, into the Tim, dungeon, get the item Tim's halfway. Okay, Collector, or whatever game that was, that didn't follow it. Link's Crossbow Training, that didn't follow it. Well, that's just them <laughs> using None of those, I think, <laughs> ever got labeled Legend of Zelda, though. Yes, they did. I mean, did they, they had the Zelda... Legend of Zelda, Link's Crossbow Training. I'm pretty sure that's how it came out. Well, not oh, the now I want to know. Oh. Now I want to know. I thought that's how it was. Oh, I maybe I'm wrong. Positive. Maybe I'm wrong. Link's Crossbow Training. God, I played so much of that. It was so much fun. Oh, that I, was a fun game. Yeah, oh. it's it's just Link's Crossbow Training. Oh, okay. I'm wrong then. Well, it's not that I you're wrong, but that's <laughs> what, what it is, is that it just tells you the power of the IP. Like, yeah. you literally thought to yourself, oh, it's Legend of Zelda, Link's Crossbow Training. You're like, how could I be wrong? That's true. Yeah, and then there's just ripened Tingle's Balloon Trip of Love. Oh, like, <laughs> uh, no Legend of Zelda in front of that. No, well, that one I wouldn't expect. That's Tingle. Tingle's a whole, that's a whole, yeah. up, John. that's its own category. <laughs> one day, NOA is going to open the floodgates on that, and the entire North America is just going to lose its fucking mind, and it's going to be hilarious. Okay, what about the ones that you had to play with the four-player? Oh, even those, a lot of that followed some of that same formula, too. I would say one that didn't follow that, though, sort of, Oops. because you could do it, was uh, Link Between Worlds, because you could buy all the stuff at the beginning. True. You could. Wait, they they definitely played with that formula a little bit. Oh, link between the link between worlds. Remember Ravio? Yeah. You could buy. You could. You could. You could buy all the items, or you items. could rent them. Yeah. yeah oh. You could rent them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I never had the rupees because I was stupid. <laughs> so I just said, nope, we're gonna keep playing. <laughs> Listen, I. You know what though? It, and that was. But again, I think that's where Zelda games also differ is that they introduced new mechanics. In that game, you had the wall. Um, oh yeah, God, I mean great. it's it's literally like Mario games. There, it's the same question. Can we? Yeah. And I would think honestly, on its surface, Mario games could be a, its own genre before mm-hmm. Zelda games, because there's different types of Mario games. Yes. But but Zelda does follow that same pattern, and like like uh, Rawl said, until Breath of the Wild, and that's only two games now. Two massive games that yeah. fundamentally <laughs> shift everything. Oh, geez, it almost no makes you think like and even what are then they to do an that? extent, at least Breath of the Wild follows that formula almost. It's it's a little pared There's down, no but even no, but you do have the divine beasts, which are basically mini dungeons, and each but of which is going to yield a major power. But you don't have to do them. You can go no, directly to Ganon, and you don't see that's where that differs. Is where mm-hmm. in the other games you had to go, direct, you had to follow that linear time, uh, that linear path to be able to get to Ganon or to the protagonist or the antagonist. Whereas in Breath of the Wild, <laughs> you want to go and fight him in your underwear, go fight him, have fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> but even Breath of the Wild will still coax you on that path. Well, so, it yeah. like okay, so Breath of the Wild. Yeah, because they have like the the island at the beginning, right? The tutorial. Yeah, the that's plateau. The tutorial. Right, the plateau where you can't get off until you actually kind of do something. Unless yeah. you cheat. Right. <laughs> but like a normal gamer is not going to do that. What? It's gonna be, like 
somebody that's going to figure it out, like, okay, I just want to keep playing. Like, I remember playing that and being on that plateau forever and being like, oh, oh there's yeah. more to this game? Mm-hmm. Well, that was the problem when I first found the Underground in Tears of the Kingdom. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I didn't leave it for, like... That was my whole problem with that entire game was I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go do this today. And then like five hours later, I never got to what I was going to do. That was me in Breath of the Wild <laughs> when I first put that game in. I, I've told the story many times. I went to GameStop at early Sunday morning, grabbed it, came back, hooked it up to my TV, played it. And all of a sudden, my wife comes into the door and says, are you going to like eat go today? Go to work? Yeah. Are you going to eat today? <laughs> and it was like 12 hours later. Yep. You know, I mean. Like, literally, that's what happened to me. So I'm like, okay. So I don't know. I don't think we really answered the question. No, but I but think it's a, it's a tough question. More questions. Uh, it's the question. It's I, question. I think we're at a point where Zelda-like should just be in the vocabulary here. It should I be. Mean, it gives people an idea. Like, if I'm looking for a game, I could. it gives me an idea of what to expect. Right. I'm going to have to, I'm going to start off, I'm going to have to find items to progress further. But in that way, are Zelda games more like Metroidvania type games? I mean, they don't is it have all the backtracking track? component. Uh, that's, what? They don't. Actually. What Zelda game do you need to go back to an old dungeon for? Once you complete you the just dungeon, don't. you're done. You're done. Okay. Yeah. You might oh, go I'm back thinking... to something in the overworld, but you're okay. not. Okay, we're not talking mm-hmm. about like going back to the dungeon. Okay. Okay. It 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 Metroid keeps you stuff, going on a line. At, at Metroid well, stuff, you absolutely have to go back. They will keep you bouncing all over the place, back to places you've been over and over again. Ball of spaghetti versus spool of yarn. Okay. So, okay. but like That's I said, they're they're close, that. like. If if you get down to the formula, those two are at least like first cousins. Yeah. Yeah. So there there is I think it's it there, there's definitely more. a Venn diagram between a Zelda like and a Metroidvania with significant overlap. And I think it requires more discussion um about what you're actually like hammering down for. Right. Right. Are you saying yeah. it's Zelda like and because it's like this? Or are you saying it's Zelda like because it's like this or both? And if you say both, okay, I'm fine. Or like to like me when I, it's when I say Metroidvania. The I, yeah. So when I say Metroidvania, that's what I'm just getting at. I understand the formula. I get it. I'm gonna have to go through something, come back to something else with what I acquired, then to proceed. Now right. mm-hmm. Zelda like I would say would be like, okay, I go through this dungeon, I get something maybe unique that I don't that I need, and I could come back, but I don't ever go back to the dungeon again. Mm-hmm. It's like it's over. I can, but that pushes me through the story. Yeah. So yeah, for me, if you're splitting this into a genre, you're talking about the formula or subgenre, perhaps might okay. be more accurate here because I, I would say Metroidvania is a subgenre in as much as it's its own genre at the oh, same time. Sure. And so I think your your Zelda like is a functional subgenre because there's enough other stuff out there that fits that descriptor yeah. perfectly to where it's like we have a thing that you can point to that narrows it down and said, you know, like what's uh you know what's what's Okami? It's a fucking Zelda like. Did you like Zelda? You'll like this. It's it's the same thing with the new coat of paint. It's the formula you liked. Have fun. So, unless you're talking to somebody that says, I only like chocolate ice cream. Any other ice cream I'd like? Like, you're going to like chocolate. That's it. Or you get somebody that goes, I like fucking ice cream. You don't hand them a pizza slice. You go, well, <laughs> I've got vanilla, chocolate, swirl, strawberry, bubblegum, Superman, and moose tracks. They're all fucking ice cream, and they're all pretty cool, but they're all fucking ice cream. <laughs> right. I get it. Versus the guy that says, I like food. Cool. Have some lo mein. <laughs> right. So it just it makes it, it boggles me that we don't do this. I will say it is not it is not a formula that has been aped so frequently as metroidvania so it's it, it 
it makes sense that this is not a conversation that's really come up yet. Yeah. But I, I definitely think that we passed the point where it should have come up a while ago. Right. I agree. So. Are there a lot of games, though, that follow the Zelda pattern, do you think? I've uh, played I, plenty. I think there are if you actually, like, define the pattern. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if you define the pattern, and whether it's subconscious or not, that the developers are doing it. That's the whole other thing, too. I think it might be even subconscious that they're doing yeah. it. Yeah. They grew up well, with and it just works. Yeah, I mean, look at how successful it's been. And but yeah. I think that's I maybe it's I I guess maybe it's a level of respect for that game. I I do oh, think for sure. I I think with all due respect to all the games that have ever come out when we look at the history and I think, you know, Josh, you and I have had the very fortunate ability to grow up with the systems like i I look at each console as where we were at in our lives like when we were babies there was the atari then you know our our elementary school was an nes and so on i wasn't that far behind you too no you weren't that far no No, No. but 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 a few years yeah but i mean definitely a few years we all kind of we all grew up with that and in in that regard and i think Zelda has just always, this is why I will always say it'll be its own, because people, I think, just have a high respect for what that game created. And a lot of, I, th- I, I, I think it's easy to say that Zelda inspired a lot of these open world games, along with Final Fantasy. I would put Zelda, Mario, and Final Fantasy, those three series, as the ones that have inspired most, of, and Sonic to a point, too. Those are the game series that inspired no, a lot of the games that we re- play today. Not, I do not accept Sonic. I only say Sonic because... <laughs> throw Sonic out the window. <laughs> I only throw Sonic because Sonic yeah. added the speed. Okay? You're right. No, you're right. No. But you're... but really, when you look at where all these games, you can really, you have those three series, Final Fantasy, um, Zelda, and Mario. Three different, unique styles... And now the games, I think we've gotten to a point where all those games, you're seeing collaborated into into that. And then, I mean, you could even add, and then, you know, you could add in other, like, you, you know, you can start going in there, like, underneath that, like, if we were doing, like, a pyramid. But those three games really inspired, I think, a lot of mm-hmm. where the games have come. Because you'll see, I think I see a lot more of those three games in today's games where you can actually see where you can point out that's very Final Fantasy-esque, that's very Zelda-esque, that's very Mario-esque. Um, and even with, like, Metroid and Castlevania, you can see a little bit of that, those games, in um, in in those top three. But that's just my yeah, personal opinion. No, you're, you're totally talking about, like, the base elements of gaming. Yeah. You know, you, you've got compound substances and then you get down to the periodic table of elements. And then from there, you're, you know, you're you're stripping down to, you know, protons, neutrons and electrons. And then, right. you know, to fucking quarks, you're you're it, it's a question of how many layers down do you go? Do you get to the fucking base elements of the universe? Exactly. And it's very that's why I think it's just so hard to say, like, I have a hard time saying, oh, that's a Mario type game. I, it's a hard for me to say, oh, that's a Final Fantasy. We've made it into RPG-like, Cal- Metroidvania-like, platformer-like. Um, well, the platformer, at least especially like Mario to Sonic to, I mean, that specific, and I'm tangenting for half a second here, but like that specific got its own kind of category too, because then you got to mascot platformer. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So that was I mean, its own specific flavor. And you say mascot platformer and you know, everybody in the room here knows what the fuck you mean. Yeah. Right. And I think that the reason we have trouble with that, I do too. And the reason we have trouble with that is because we grew up playing those actual games. Now there's a whole generation of people that are coming, never played those. Never or, played those, no. Right. And so if you say like, it's like that, they may actually understand what you're talking about more. And so it might help them. But I'm not 100% on that because... I think they might have played some of those games, but they may not have played all of them like we have. Yeah. And they may not ever go back because you have to imagine, like we grew up, all three of us grew up with all these games mm-hmm. moving forward. New gamers coming in. Like if I had, uh, like my nephew, he's seven. 
one of my nephews, mm-hmm. is seven. He's never going to probably go back and play all the games I played. No. Mm-hmm. So would that be an, uh, but he might play a new version of that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if, if I were to say to him, like, oh, this is like this one, would he even understand what I'm talking about? No. Right. But if that's where his ground floor is. But that's what I'm saying. Like, And yeah. then you tell him this it's, is a Zelda like you're like oh cool I'm looking for more of this right exactly and that's where this I'm is the genre you're in that's but, where what it's Zelda, but what Zelda are they going to be looking at because I do think Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are completely different they in are, many but ways they're definitely outliers when you look at the the mass of the series as a whole right but I think majority of gamers that we see are playing those two games and not like like you said the ones we grew up with so i think you got to look at that age now see like my kids they grew up on zelda because i was playing it for them and that was their bedtime story that was what i would read to them at night so my babe when my oldest was a baby i was playing twilight princess while they were in the room with me and reading the story to them skyward sword same thing so that they kind of have an idea of those games, but what about the generation that's younger? That'll be interesting to see when you say it's Zelda like, what are they going to be thinking? Yeah. If they've never played some of the older versions. Right. So, I don't know. I I I think Zelda like should be in the vernacular, but mm-hmm. I don't know. F- final vote, Kathy yay or nay? I think it's its own category. Yay. Well, I don't say, that, that's like a 2.5 out of 3 on the yes vote here. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think we're basically there. So yep. there we go. All right. Well, I, I think we nailed final thoughts perfectly. So uh, let's let's wrap this bitch up. Uh, big shout out, big thank you to our sponsor, Imaginary Authors. Thank you to Kathy and Lagru for coming and hanging out with me today, and uh, you know, chewing the fat and splitting some hairs. And thank you to everybody that tuned in. Make sure, just a reminder, subscribe to the show in your feed. You know, you'll get new stuff every week for free. We don't charge for this. We just do this out of the goodness of our hearts because you should hear it, and you know, be a more enlightened, discerning gamer. And, uh, you know, share it with your friends and make the world a better place. Uh, beyond that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night. night. Peace. This is the World 1-1 Podcast, powered by the World 1-1 Podcast Network. Press start to engage your mind. Good night.